Welcome to the 10th session on Fundamentals of Computers. I'm Mani Bhushan D'Souza and in today's class we are going to look at Venn Diagrams. So we will see what is Venn Diagram and how they can be used to represent the logical gates. So what is a Venn Diagram? A Venn Diagram is nothing but a graphical representation of a logical relationship between the sets. So we know that uh, in mathematics, a collection of elements are called as sets. And to represent the relationship between these sets, we can use Venn diagrams. It visually represents the similarity or differences between the elements within the two sets. So suppose uh, if uh, two sets are given to us, we can identify which among them are common between the two sets or which of them, which of the elements are uh, unique among the two sets. The Venn diagrams were popularized by John Venn in the uh, 1880s. To represent a Venn diagram, we draw a rectangle that represents the universal set. So a universal set is a set consisting of all the sets that we are talking about. It consists of everything. So it is um, the entire universe of disclosure that we are talking about. Inside this universe, we represent our set and the our set is represented by a circle. The relationship between the sets are represented by either overlapping the two circles or two or more circles or intersecting them together or you can also have a non-intersecting regions of the circles. So let's look at a simple Venn diagram. Now in this case we have the rectangle that represent the universal set. Remember, universal set is something that consists of everything. That's the entire universe. Within this, we represent our area, that is the our circle. So this is the set that we are interested in. So this elements within this set are the one that we are interested in. So this is the elements. So all the points within this particular circle are the elements of this particular set. Now because we are considering this set, we shared them to say that uh, this is the region that we are interested in. Now suppose we have a situation wherein we have the universal set that consists of everything and we also have uh, the elements of the given set but we are not interested in any of the elements we want all the elements outside the given set and that we know that is a complement of the given set how do we represent the complement we shade the outside its circle that is outside a region of, within the outside the circle to say that we are interested in the elements which are outside the given set. Now we know very well that given set and all the elements outside the given set forms the universal set. So A plus A complement will give you the entire universal set. As I've already told you, the interaction among the sets can be represented by the way in which we place the circles. In other words, how the circles intersect with each other represent the relationship between the sets. There can be three scenarios. Let's look at the first scenario. In the first scenario, we have two sets that is uh, represented here as set A and set B. Now, if the two circles intersect with each other, then we say that there are some elements within this region which are common to both the set, that is the set A as well as the set B. So there are something which are common to them. 
Also, there are some things which are unique to one of the sets. For example, all these elements which are not part of the given set over here. So that means this area over here that you see here, this area is the element, set of elements that are common to A, but they are not common to uh, both of them nor they belong to B. In the same way, if you look at uh, this region over here, that is uh, the one that uh, you look at this one. Elements within this region are those that belongs to B, but they are not common to A or they don't belong to both of them. Now we may have a situation wherein both of them do not um, interact with each other. So this is a scenario wherein A and B do not intersect. So we say that they are mutually exclusive. None of the elements which are there in the set A are common to the set B. So they are mutually exclusive. Whereas in the previous case we have two elements which are together with each other. For example, uh, if you take, uh, uh, to give you an example, if you take the sugar, sugar is present both in the ice cream as well as in the chocolate. So uh, there is one element called as sugar which belongs to the ice cream, just to give you an example, ice cream as well as which belong to chocolate. So something that is uh, common to one another. You may have one other scenario wherein, uh, for example, you may have uh, uh, sugar and uh, your laptop and uh, you know very well there is no, no relationship between the uh, sugar and uh, laptop because or maybe the ice cream and uh, laptop together they don't have any relationship. So you may have your laptop here and uh, you may have the sugar or the ice cream over here. Both of them there is nothing common in both of them. So the elements you know, which belongs to one of the set A don't belong to the other set uh, B. Okay. Uh, to uh, give you a, another example over here, now you have uh, a BCA student uh, here and a BSc student. Now generally taking, uh, without taking the language classes, now BCA and a BSc student, they don't sit together. Okay. So they are mutually, uh, except for the language, if you don't consider the language, if you just consider the course subject, they don't sit together. But if I take uh, the CBZ student, so chemistry is common to the PCM student as well as the chemistry is uh, common to CBZ student. So there is one class in which uh, both of them are common. Okay. So one subject which is common to them. So this uh, intersection that you see over here, this region that is chemistry is common to both of them. Now let's look at uh, something else and that is the subset. Subset is uh, nothing but a set that contains something inside it. Okay, So subset contains uh, the or it is contained within the superset. So in other words, superset contains everything. So how do I set up the relationship between the superset and the subset? Now the outer circle is the superset, whereas the inner circle is the subset. Okay. Now if you uh, consider all the students who are studying in uh, Karnataka, then uh, A represent all the students who are studying in Karnataka, whereas the set B represent only those students who are studying in our college. So all of them are the student, no doubt. A student who are studying in our college are also the student, but they are the subset of uh, the all the uh, graduates or the undergraduates who are studying in uh, Karnataka. Now you can represent uh, more than one circle in uh, depending upon the number of sets. Let's look at uh, this relationship. That is the union of uh, both A, B and C set. Now, if you look at here, this is the set A. This full set that is marked here is the set A. This set is the set B. 
and this set the last set is the set C. Now if you combine them together you get the union. So this is the whole thing uh, the whole region that you see over here is the union of all of them. But you will notice that uh, in this this region the middle region over here that this region uh, that you see over here the elements here are common to A, B and C. Whereas the elements within this region that is this uh, region over here they are common to both A and B and the elements which are in this region common to A and C uh, elements over here common to C and B okay so this is how you can have represent them now we as a computer science uh, student we don't use the Venn diagrams to represent the logical uh, statements or the logical gates okay so uh, the one of the use of Venn diagram in computer science is to visualize the our uh, boolean statement we can uh, visualize the boolean statement and you know very well why do we have to visualize something is a picture is worth of a thousand words so instead of writing the long equations we can easily understand the relationship between uh, the various uh, Boolean uh, terms, Boolean algebra terms uh, using the Venn diagram. Now generally it is restricted to three or uh, less than three elements but uh, you can represent the complicated one also. So why do we have to represent it? Remember as I have already told you there are alternative way to represent uh, for alternative way for uh, representing the relationship and the general way that uh, you represent the relationship between the elements in a uh, boolean uh, expression is by drawing the truth table we are all familiar we draw the truth table to understand uh, the relationship between the elements uh, the other way around is the very simplest way of uh, showing that this is how they are related to each other is to draw the venn diagram now Let's look at how we can represent uh, the AND logic operation in the Venn diagram. Now AND is represented by the intersection part. So AND means something which is common to both of them and you know very well AND means uh, it must uh, a in the AND 1.1 1 .1 is equal to 1. For all the other if you just take two elements over here or two uh, elements then uh, 1.1 1 .1 is uh, 1 others uh, 0 .1 or, uh, 1 .0 or 0 0 or 0 0.0 all are 0. So intersection of um, A and B is nothing but set of all the elements which are common to A and B. So set of all X which are common to both A and B and you will get them in uh, this region. So this region contains the intersection of element and that's what uh, e represents the logical and. Now how do we represent uh, logical or? Logical or is uh, operation is nothing but the union that is the set of all the elements which are uh, common to both of them and that uh, is uh, the logical or operation. And we have uh, one other uh, logical operation and that is the not operation not as we know very well is the complement operation and uh, the complement uh, as I've already told you are a set of all the elements outside the given set elements outside the given set are the complement and that is what is the not logic operation now if u is the universal set as I already told you a plus a complement is the universal set and uh, a plus here is the OR operation, A or A complement is the universal set, A and A complement is always null set because there is nothing common between uh, the complement and the original set. Now let's look at, uh, let's try to represent the De Morgan's theorem using the Venn diagram. Now we know very well uh, X plus Y bar is equal to X bar dot uh, Y bar that is um, inverse of uh, x or y is uh, nothing but uh, inverse of uh, x and inverse of uh, y this is what is represented by the de morgan's theorem 
so let's look at uh, that so let's look at the first uh, the x elements in the set x which is represented by the shaded circle over here element in the set y is represented by the shaded circle here and uh, if you combine them that is uh, if you x or y if you take this x or y that is the union of them is uh, going to be this whole set over here if you invert them now you have taken the union which is the entire two circles over here if you invert them you will get all the elements outside this region okay so outside this region so this is the region that is represented by x or y complement okay now let's take uh, the right hand side in the right hand side we have the element um, the we have the set a x which is represented by the first circles the shaded circle element y which is represented by them inverse of this uh, element that is a complement of that the set x is all the elements which are outside this uh, x region similarly inverse of uh, y is a set of all the elements outside the y region and if you add them together so what's the meaning of uh, uh, saying them uh, and them together is uh, you take uh, these two things together so outside region you join them together so if you join this uh, outside region so this uh, full outside region what you get uh, is uh, this region so this is the outside region and this region is same as the one that we got uh, uh, previously that proves that uh, even using the Venn diagram we can represent the logical operation that's all in this class thank you for your interest we will meet again in the next class thank you